What's up legends, TSM is back, and yesterday was the weekly esports arena tournament and TSM made their debut at a new landing spot on World's Edge. Goodbye Frag and hello Lava Siphon. The new TSM coach Raven had mentioned that the TSM wanted to change drop zones because their current ones suck, but the changes would happen gradually. I didn't expect it to be their first tournament back from Japan. Lava Siphon is a good change from Frag East, which while it did get a buff in ground loot, got a nerf in crafting location. It's now just out in the open and much riskier to use, especially in higher tier competitions when you're just gonna get 3 2 one off the crafter, while Lava Siphon has a semi-protected crafter on the south side. This change isn't that big of a rotational change for TSM either. You can easily get anywhere on the south side of the map, and there's a jump balloon there so you can basically get a free Valkult before you have to use your actual Valkult. And for those of you who remember LAN, a ridiculously high number of zones ended at Dome on the southeast side of the map, which would help for TSM because they wouldn't have to rush and rotate early. If you listen to Raven talk, he comes off as very arrogant, but he is making good changes to TSM. They've already changed their comp, their rotational strategy, and even their landing zone. This could be the King Canyon rank effect, but TSM has been much more cautious of third parties and letting the KP come to them. And no, I'm not talking about the old TSM method where they rotate with two whites and a blue and just hide till a fight happens. They are actively assessing each team's location and moving to force those two to fight before coming in and cleaning up both teams. And if they can help it, they'll even try to pen them with the storm. Look at this clip. It was probably the cleanest TSM wipe I've witnessed in a while, and it's all because of how much influence they had on making these two teams fight in the first place. Hi, are you still in the extra light? Yeah, yeah, I have, I have two stacks here. One guy's right here. Oh. Crack the seer, what the fuck? Where's they're gonna fight. They're they're on top of each other, I think. They're literally on top yeah, of each I other. I can ulti the side then. I can ulti the side of the building then, soon. I'm gonna ulti right there. You guys ready? I'm ulting. Yeah. I'm locking up left side here. One on height. Tune up, tune up. One guy's on height. One guy's on height. I have to go high. I have to go high. I'm going high. I'm going high with you. I'm batting on height. I'm batting on height. Horizon's gonna die to zone. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Dead to zone. Mark him inside. Nate. I finished the down guy. I'm swinging. I'm swinging. Careful, third. Nice. Fox, Fox, Fox. This is I'm looking, I'm looking. Gain space, there. gain space. Whoever, who... With that being said, World's Edge was their strong point, and while that clip was on Storm Point, it wasn't all smooth sailing. They often talked about how they felt lost on Storm Point and how their rotations were just scuffed. They were actually planning a VOD review in the middle of the tournament just to go over how bad their Storm Point was and how they could improve it. They hinted at changing their drop location for Storm Point, but Raven actually DM'd Hal instead of saying it on stream for everyone to hear which most likely means they're going to challenge someone soon for a new landing location. Raven said it wouldn't change their rotations that much, which leads me to think it's either Launchpad or Barometer. The easier contest is probably Launchpad versus C9. There is a beacon and pretty reliable crafting and tons of loot, and you aren't far from where you used to be with clear lines of sight for any teams that are trying to push up on you. And we've all seen how hard it is to arrive at Launchpad late and try to find a landing spot for zone. The other option seems more difficult to claim, which is Barometer. G2 is currently looking for a home on Storm Point, and they've been landing at Lightning Rod contesting Furia, more out of spite than actually wanting the POI, but during the ESA tournament, G2 was contesting Barometer, and it was just third party hell. There's a bunch of smaller random teams that show up during smaller tournaments, and then in bigger tournaments, Torrent will sometimes land there if they don't go Jurassic, and on a larger scale during the Grand Finals, that's where Scars lands. With that being said, TSM is looking up and proving that they are all in this year. I love seeing the effort they are putting into getting ready and their willingness to make changes. I'm looking forward to more surprises from them moving forward, especially on Storm Point. So until next time, Legends.